Hey everyone, Zero Shady here with the X-Play Fan Show. I'm here to give you a quick taste of Mutant Year Zero, Road to Eden. Very much a XCOM kind of like game uh, with a bit of wasteland thrown in there. All right, so I am about probably three or four hours, maybe more. I've actually lost track of time while playing this because I'm enjoying this a lot. Uh, it's a... It's hard to describe without actually showing it, but uh, if you've ever played uh, Wasteland, you are running around these overworlds and you can kind of see like where enemies are and stuff like that. And in this game, you can kind of, you're mostly starting uh, battles out from in stealth. So if an enemy is roaming, you can kind of pick them off and everything. So I'm actually here in the Ark. This is where humanity's last like survival is outside in the Wasteland or the, uh, the zone as they call it. Uh, you have ghouls, zone dogs, robots, all these crazy things that are uh, essentially just deadly. Uh, if you ever play the Stalker games, uh, that's essentially what this is. You're running around as uh, a, uh, let's see, where is it? You have, you're running around as Bormir, ha 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 ha, uh, and Ducks. Those are the two you start out with. Uh, ducks here I have kind of equipped as a sniper kind of guy. So you have a silent weapon here so I can actually eliminate enemies who are kind of off by themselves. And then Bormir is my big uh, up close. Uh, he's got the boom stick. And then my third uh, fourth my third character was actually uh, Selma here and she is more of a kind of crowd control girl. She came with a sniper, a uh, silence pistol. And then I recently picked up Magnus here who has uh, psychic abilities like uh, lightning and mind control. So everyone uh, you play as is a mutant because to go out into these zones, they said you have to be more than human to survive, so mostly mutants. So uh, let's get to my, and it's, of course it's normal, like equipment, like uh, primary weapon, secondary weapon, I got grenades. Don't really use them because I've been doing a lot of like stealth takedowns, which I really like. And then I th like, by the time I get to like uh, normal combat, there's not that many enemies clustered together. So boomstick and then the sniper rifles I have usually finish them off. Uh, you have hats, which is hilarious because they do different stuff to your character. His right now has a extra critical chance when you're hidden. Actually, let's put the mind control hat on him because he's usually not attacking when hidden. And let's put the, this on you. And of course you have uh, armor, which adds a armor point and a health point. I believe the armor negates one damage so uh bormir has a two p uh two bits of armor and that so if he shot for three he only takes one bit of damage to health so this is where it gets interesting you have the mutations so bormir here can actually bust through walls and he can actually eat, eat uh, corpses to regain health later on he's gonna be able to be like hey you can get stone skin and then uh if someone's nearby you emit emit uh spores and i believe they will kind of be like hey, i'd see their I don't know, block line of sight and stuff like that. Uh, my psychic man here can actually mind control in electric shock. And uh, my ducks here can actually sprout wings like in uh, XCOM, the jetpack troopers who can go up high in the air, fire, and then come back down. And the third girl here, she could, uh, she has these, these abilities to like root people and she has like super frog legs, which is neat. So this is Ark. This is where you go back to like trade in stuff and all that kind of stuff. My menu at the top, I have scrap, which is currency. The second one is artifacts, which is like boom boxes and stuff that the ancients uh, used to have. They had this entire speech at the beginning about how the nukes went off and everything like the ancients uh, were like destroyed by the hubrises. Uh, Bormir, Bormer. I don't, I don't ever remember how to actually say his name. Borman, Borman, I don't know why I say Bormir, Lord of the Rings, Borman uh, has this great monologue about how he's like addressing, like he kept saying you and stuff like that. It's actually pretty great. I got health packs here and then I have weapon parts, which you upgrade with. So let's go to the fix pit. Welcome to the fix pit. So as you can see here, all the weapons here have like these little blue dots here. So that means I can, uh, those are actually uh, attachments and I've actually kind of attached stuff here like this one right here. Uh, it has a 50% ch chance to burn enemy. And then this uh, site here will add a 20% range. And I've kind of done it all through here. A lot of my pistols have the ability to stun uh, mechs. And then I can also upgrade. So let's 
find one I have not upgraded yet. Uh, yeah, Agent Pistol. So if I uh, put some points in here, it's going to make it go from 5 damage to 7 damage. And of course, have the weapons have the normal damage, crit damage, crit chance, ammo before you need to reload, and in range. And da, da. Later, stalkers. See, and of course, you're stalkers, if I didn't mention that. Uh, Prip's bar here is where you trade in those quote unquote artifacts. Oh, stools, uh, you can get perks. So, like, my first one I bought is uh, the store, you can get a 20% discount. Then I can now carry more, uh, uh, like, more Molotov damage, like, more. The Molotov lasts longer. I can do uh, better med packs. And then I'm working for this one where it's a ranger, increase the weapon damage by one because each point of damage in this game is insane. And of course, this is the shop where this angry lady hangs out. I was a stalker for 20 years. Spent quite some... She tells you stories. It's eh. And I can buy stuff here. Nothing is right now very interesting to me. I have a plenty of med packs. I am playing on normal, so it hasn't been that hard. Uh, there is normal, hard, impossible, or whatever their version is, and then uh, the Iron Man challenge. So right now, my goal is to find Hammond, who is essentially like the mechanic who knows how all the stuff on this station works, because people think everything's fine. What's really happening is that this place, this place is breaking down, and we're super low on resources. So Hammond's out trying to find Eden, and we kind of... Uh, uh, these two here, Magnus and Selma, were the ones who were accompanying him and kind of got left behind. And now he's been captured. And we've been following him. So we're actually heading down over here. So this is actually the overworld map. Uh, don't be stupid like me. If you ever want to quick travel, you can just hit uh, the select button, go to the zone map. And you can just pick one of these places. So I've actually... This is the last place I was over here. This is a pizza parlor, I believe. And uh, apparently they're, uh, instead of a pizza parlor in the stories, it was like a legendary couple who ran away to a a palace with a vast amount of riches. So it's like a lot of funny muddled uh, lore to them because like, hey, the fallen angel is actually just a uh, Chinook helicopter or the the iron serpent is a like this giant metal beast that they would ride in it's a train so we're actually gonna head over here so my new tactic has been with uh magnus is uh uh puppeteer ability is i grab a person and kind of bring him over to me pass my turn set my troops up around him and stealthily kill him uh Borman has an ability that i can tackle someone and make them fall over because if I can uh, eliminate them quietly, I'd have less to deal with. All right, so this is how you are usually running around. Uh, as you can see, I can have a flashlight out. So that kind of means like, hey, the detection range of enemies is higher. If I hit B, I go into sneak mode and it kind of goes down. I can cycle through them. And if I want to enter combat, I can hit X. Or, or, and I can also kind of be like, hey, you hide here. Let's see, there's a guy like standing like right here in these bushes. I can go over here, hide him here, and then go over to Ber Berman, hide here, and then he initiate combat. Stay put. Regroup. Right, let me get everyone back. And that's what I've been doing a lot of the time, either picking people off slowly or uh, the uh, pull them away as I can because. Uh, Damage in this is no joke, even on normal. All right, so let's see if we can't tug someone away. And of course, you can. There's like, I got some weapon parts now. So look at this train. That train looks awesome. Uh, the cutscenes are amazingly done. I love how the art style that the artists have picked. I'm overall very much enjoying this game. But let's go find. No, oh, that's my own footsteps. So if I wanted to, I could try to sneak past all these guys, but this game is very much set up in the kind of vein of, hey, uh, there's a limited amount of battles as far as I can see, I have seen. There we go. Looks like there's ghouls camped out in that machine. And I want to try to get, uh, oh. They were smaller in the old days, dumber too. Uh, I want to try to get as much experience as I can as in the upper left. Weapons of the we are the kings of the souls. 
So maybe those two, these two will, these two will split up. The guy over there, the shaman over there, has a record player in his back. If he plays it, he summons more dudes. So I kind of want to get rid of him. Butchers are close range attackers, and there's a the big dude over there we saw earlier was a tank. So if I'm smart. Let's kind of sneak past these guys. And those red rings are their uh, visual range. Uh, they were talking about zone dogs, which I might go take care of first because I had issues with them. If you use a loud weapon, uh, essentially everyone in the area knows you're there. And zone dogs and the ghouls will kind of team up on you. So we might actually just do this area and then I will let you guys go because... Uh... Oh, there he is. So that's him right there. So let's kind of... So I've initiated combat. All right. So I can actually pick any of my characters here. I will go and then they will go. Uh, there's a, another zone dog over here, but he should be far enough away that I don't really need to worry about it. And I can go over for that guy. And then the mother zone dog is the one that's going to give me issues. Uh, so I have, I can move in these squares. If, if anyone's played uh, XCOM or any of those kind of games, as this is normal. See these, um, see the word walk to the left? There are these two clips. Those are my action points. So I can do either, I can move, I can attack, which takes up all my turns, which I'm gonna do. I'm gonna actually slip to my silence weapon and pop him. And I got a crit hit. So he's heard me. Uh, I can go to overwatch, which means that if my character sees, has someone come into his line of attack, uh, he will actually attack them. So, so this guy has another Ooh. quiet weapon. So he's not burning. Oh, and then uh, dig down is that. And then I have this rush, which I'm gonna go over here, slam into him, keep him down for another turn. And since he has less than uh, two life, all right, less than half of his life. I should be able to go. Two of those, pop him. That was awesome. And I kind of pull everyone back. And I've leveled up, so I should have some ability points. So let's see what we got. All right, perfect. So here I can actually make him have uh, more movement, which I want because the next one is more health. So let's get for that. And they do their little glowy thing over there. Boom. All right, so that was a really good combat encounter in my mind because they didn't, nothing, no one was alerted and nothing terrible happened. All right, so there's another zone dog there and we're gonna do the exact same thing again. I can't mind control this guy, but I can pick him off and then go for that uh, mother hound. You can also save in combat. Uh, in the Iron Man difficulty, you cannot, I believe. Or the uh, harder difficulties, you cannot. Uh, at the end of combat, you're healed and your abilities recharge. So let's say I use this ability here. It would take a certain amount of kills to get that ability back in this combat thing. And I do not believe that's true in uh, the other difficulties. So we're gonna... And also the right side, it shows all the information and everything like that. So we're gonna go boop. Knock. So, uh, see how this weapon does more damage, but if I switch to this one, it's silent. So we're gonna go to him, pop him. Now it's getting fun. And of course we're gonna repeat and just slam into him. See, if I had gone through that, uh, and this, this ability will actually allow me to go through a tree. See, I need three kills to reactivate this ability. All right, so I actually alerted that dog because it switched my weapon back automatically, but I don't think, uh, I might not have to worry too much about it. Can I shock him? No. Stay away from me. Zone dog is down, but I don't think I've alerted the uh, the ghouls. But this might go sideways, and we might die. All right, cool. Yeah. Now that was a good kill. So it's now her turn. So she's gonna summon some guys in, but I'm so 
they're normal zone dogs, so that's fine. So we might actually be able to pull this one out of the toilet. They might actually be heading for the uh, ghouls, and if that happens, that'd be pretty great. So we're gonna get over here to her. And shotgunner. Bam! Oh, she's been knocked back. That's really good. Don't get stupid. Good. So I, they might actually be heading over. All right, so he's been knocked down. That's fine. All right, so they took a roundabout way. That's perfect. And knock her off of him. That's perfect. Okay. So bad. So this actually went. This like even though he got knocked down and I got noticed, this is going really well. He's also still making death cries. So since, since they're super close, my hit chance is 100. So I'm gonna actually opt for the uh, the ability to make sure I get a crit hit. So he's gonna turn and go, bam. What do you think about that? Huh? Also, he she got set on fire. <laughs> Fine. I also have a med kit if he goes down, and med kits have not been an issue as of late. Uh, it's not gonna do that. That's a weird bug that he's still crying out, but hey, who knows? All right, that's perfect. So he's down for now. That's gonna be fine. I'll just kind of, I have three turns to revive him. I should be 100% fine. So on fire. Man, killing these guys before, like, so glad that the, uh... can I get that extra range and pop him? Yes, I can. So, bam. So I got him down. here and get you up because I don't know if uh, he'll revive at the end of the turn I'm not taking chances plus if I get him back up I can reload and just pop him like that there we go and that was a successful encounter in my mind and of course dogs for some reason don't have loot they don't eat it. These are like these are the healthy animals of like the wasteland world of oh we're not gonna eat everything that's on the ground. So we're just gonna report the save. Uh the only suggestion I would like is that instead of this, I can just hit left or like set the left and right on the D-pad and quickly select stuff. So what we're gonna actually do is we're gonna switch out his mutation. Yeah, you can switch out mutations. I've never seen this one happened before but that sounds really cool that oh hey this guy's kind of psychic so we can pull crap out of the air so what we're gonna try to do is also if you get if you uh, higher up you get a uh, boost to your attack and stuff like that so this tank I don't think I can kill him in the amount of turns that they're gonna offer but I know that I can DPS the hell out of him. The shaman is who I'm kind of worried about. So pull everyone up here. Because I don't think I can kill him in the amount of turns that it gives me. So let's grab you. And that, that turned out to work well. So we're gonna run over here and we're gonna charge this guy. And they should attack him in the confusion. That had to hurt. Get rid of you. And I have a second charge with a boar buddy here. So there's a 25% chance to hit. Let's move up a little bit here. And then pop him. Perfect. Okay, so we're gonna get that shaman was the biggest issue because his ability to summon other people. The butcher is a non-issue, 
and the tank is kind of a non-issue. Alright, so let's actually switch him to here. Actually, let's just throw a grenade right on top of ourselves. Because that killed the shaman, which is perfect. We're going to reload. See if we can't take out this butcher. We're not going to be able to do it this turn. That fire might be able to finish him off. So while we're here, we're going to put you in there. Take this guy out. And once again, this was a beautiful encounter. Good. All right, so that tank has now come back, but he like, he's focused, focused on Borman, which is perfect. Yeah. He's on fire, eating right on through that shield. If I wanted to, I could re-mind control him and put him into a better, uh, myself into a better position, but this tank alone, while yes, intimidating, is not the worst thing in the world. Because he's mostly forcing, focusing on Berman, Borman and not doing insane amount of damage. Yes. Reload. Take aim. Bammo. And, and experience is shared. Man, he really is focused on Borman. Um, also, instead of saying uh, WTF, they say what the duck, which is great. Okay, so we've done that encounter. That's it. Borman uh, gets back up with his funny helmet. And uh, I say that was a really amazing encounter. So we're going to go in here and kind of collect the goodies that they were kind of hanging around. Oh, also the way uh, items are given out. I don't know if it's uh, trying to make fun of it or anything, but they have these chests, and when you hit open, it's like a uh, loot chest, and it goes boosh, and a puff of magic. So, uh, Rambino, that's actually the weapon that Magnus has. Broken electronics. And uh, we've kind of cleared out this area, so we're going to hit the left trigger, and it's going to show us where to go. And I can kind of look it up on the map. Uh, on the overworld map, it'll actually show you like with the recommended levels for stuff and all that kind of stuff. But uh, this is Mutant Year Zero, Road to Eden. I'm very much enjoying this. I love XCOM games. Uh, the I never finished XCOM 2, Com 2 mostly because of like the severe, there were some severe bugs with the uh, cutscenes going out of sync and stuff like that. But I will highly, hi I highly suggest this if you're into XCOM or if you liked um, Wasteland. Anyways, thank you very much for joining me. I am Zero JT. This was the XBLA Fans channel. Sorry if this was a bit of a long video, but there was a lot of to show, and I'm glad I got to show you some combat. And I'm glad the combat didn't go sideways for me. Thank you, and have a nice day. A treasure waiting to get picked around here. I feel it in my feathers.